So this is how I go about sketching up my kitchen layout. This is the final product here. I'll show you most of the steps that I use to get to this point. Before I even use SketchUp, I like to draw it out on paper and write down all the measurements so that I don't have to get up and measure and go back to the computer and back and forth and all of that. It makes a much more easy and quick experience. When you're ready, go to SketchUp, create new, and you can see that they have different templates for the units that you want your measurements in. I'm using feet and inches. Go ahead and click on this lady and delete her. She's just in the way. Before we get started, notice the coordinate system and the colors of the axes and that the blue axis is the vertical axis and that the green axis goes backwards and that the red axis is going across the screen. These colors are going to be reused throughout to give you guidance in the direction of what tool you're using. All right, let's do the floor layout of the kitchen. Use the rectangular drawing tool, click, let go, and pull that pencil tool in the direction you want to build it. In the lower right hand corner you can see the dimensions of the rectangle. Instead of trying to stretch it, we're going to start typing now. You don't have to click in the box or let go or anything like that. You just pull that box to where you want it and you start typing your dimensions. So in my case I want 13 feet, 10 inches, comma, 7 feet, 10 inches. Hit enter and it will make that rectangle the exact size you typed in. Now practice using the rotate tool. If you hold the shift key while you rotate it will turn into a hand and will allow you to move or pan the screen. This is really useful to get different perspectives on your drawing. Now instead of drawing every single appliance that's in my kitchen we're gonna cheat and use the components that other people have drawn and added to the 3D warehouse. Click on the components tab, go up to the search bar and type in let's say refrigerator if we want to start with that. Find one that's in terms of looks the closest to what you have and want to put into your layout. Click it and it's going to download into your drawing. When it downloads move it maybe off to the side so that we can work on it a little bit before we put it into our kitchen. Now it's probably a little difficult to tell from this picture, but the refrigerator's facing the wrong direction for the layout of my kitchen here. We'll rotate the refrigerator so we can see it from above, and then we're going to use this rotate tool. I'm choosing from above, and notice that this protractor rotating tool is blue because I want to turn it around the blue axis. Click on two corner points of the refrigerator on the top, and then start turning the refrigerator. I want it to turn exactly 90 degrees so I move it in the direction I want and then without clicking or anything I just type 90 and you'll see it in the lower right hand corner and hit enter and it'll move it exactly 90 degrees. If I was finished I could use this move tool and I could click on the refrigerator and move it onto the kitchen floor but I'm not quite finished with it yet so I'm going to just rotate it and get a better view of it so I can see all three dimensions length, width, and height. I'm going to use the dimensions tool and put on the dimensions for the length, width, and height of the refrigerator so that I can see how big the original artist or drawer or engineer made this refrigerator. I'm doing this so that I can scale this refrigerator so that it matches the refrigerator that I have in real life. Find the scale tool and then click on the refrigerator. When you click on it, you should see a bunch of green handles. The width of my refrigerator is 2 feet 6 inches, which this one's just a little bit off. So I'm going to use this set of handles that are going in the same direction to shrink it down just a tiny bit to 2 feet 6 inches. I'm not trying to get it perfect, just trying to get it really close. Let's see if I can zoom this in and give you a better look. This time, the refrigerator is also two feet six inches deep so I use the pull handles going in that direction and pull it as close as I can to two feet six inches. The height of the refrigerator is exactly 60 inches or five feet so I gotta shrink it down a little bit. When finished click the arrow tool to deselect the, and get out of that scaling tool. Alright let's grab a stove as well. We're gonna do the same steps we're going to search for it in the components library, click on it, it's going to download, 
And then for now, I'm going to just set it off to the side here so that we can make sure it's positioned correctly and then also scale it to the correct size. For me, this stove is pointing in the, or is facing the correct direction, so all I need to do is scale it. First, go to the dimension tool, put the dimensions on the length, width, and height of it so that we know how big it currently is. You may need to rotate it a little bit so you can get better access to all the sides and, and place the dimensions. Go to where the move tool is and in that set of tools is the scale tool. Click on the stove and then you will see all the scaling handles show up. The depth of my stove is 2 feet 5 inches so I need to pull these center handles that go in that direction until I hit as close as I can to about 2 feet 5 inches. The width of my stove is 2 feet 6 inches, so I stretch it in that direction with the appropriate handles. I don't need to change the height because the 3 feet was already correct. I'm going to move my appliances here out of the way with the move tool because I need some room because I think I'm ready to add the walls and start placing these appliances. I want to get a better view of the floor, so I'm going to use the rotate tool. And remember, if you hold the shift key, it turns into the hand and it'll you can move it around. Now we're probably going to use what I consider to be the most important tool, the tape measure tool, and use it to construct five inch walls all the way around. Because the walls in my house are five inches. I click on a line and then move it in the direction that I want to offset it. I'm building these walls outside of the floor. Notice the direction I'm moving it in this case has a red arrow because it's moving in the direction of the red axis. I want it to be exactly 5 inches so I don't click, I just type 5 in double quotes for 5 inches and hit enter. I'm going to use the tape measure tool to mark off this 5 inches for the walls all the way around. Before I can just pull up the walls I need to mark where the doorways are. So I'm going to use my tape measure tool and measure off some distances so I know exactly where the doorway entrances are into my kitchen, which happen to be about 30 inches each. Once everything's marked, I'm going to use the rectangular drawing tool and the pencil to mark the lines that make the walls and the doorways. When finished, I don't need all these guidelines messing up my drawings, so I can use the Delete Guidelines button in the Display Tools. Using the arrow tool, I can click on a couple lines that are not needed any longer and then press Delete and remove them from the drawing. Now we're going to use perhaps the most exciting tool in SketchUp, the Push-Pull tool, and pull up the walls. In this case, for me, I click on the surface I want to pull, I move it in the direction I want, and mine are 8 feet tall, so I start typing 8 and then apostrophe for 8 feet and hit enter and it will go directly to 8 feet tall. Position yourself so you can easily see into the room and also the appliances that you're going to want to move. If you want, use your arrow tool now, and we don't need those dimensions on the appliances anymore, so you can click on them and delete them if you don't want them any longer. Now we want to use that move tool and move the appliances into the correct locations in the room. Now I know that this back corner of the stove will go and line up with the back edge of this room. So I use the move tool, click on that back corner of the stove, and then pull it, move it in the direction of the room, and try to find that intersection point for that corner, and then click it there. That makes it the easiest way to move it. If you can move point to point. Otherwise, moving things can be a little bit difficult. Now in between the stove and the refrigerator is a little drawer, little cabinet that sits there. I'm just going to draw in a rectangle and pull it up. I'm not going to get fancy with the cabinetry. Remember, with the rectangle tool, click, let go, move it in the direction that you want, and then type in the dimensions that you need. In this case, I need to type 25 inches deep, so 25 double quotes, comma, 12 inches wide, 12, and then double quotes, hit enter, and it'll draw it for you. 
use the push-pull tool, click on the surface, move it in the direction upward that you want, type in three and then apostrophe for three feet, hit enter, it will draw it three feet tall. I'm going to use the rotate tool, I'm going to move this around, get a better view so I can see where I want to put the refrigerator and see the refrigerator at the same time. Use the move tool, click on that back corner of the refrigerator, and then move it and try and line it up with that edge that's made by the floor and the wall. When you're done positioning, click to stick it where you want. Sometimes you're not going to place it exactly where you want, so you got to zoom in, use the placement tool again, the move tool, and move it over just a little bit to get it exactly where you want. I have a little shelving unit that goes next to the refrigerator. I'm going to make that pretty much exactly the same way that I made the little cabinet that sits between the stove and the refrigerator. On the top of that shelf goes a microwave. So I'm going to go back to the components, find and search for a microwave that matches the one I've got. You see it's a little too big, so I'm going to scale it. I'm going to get a better view here. Whoops, the wall is in my way, so I'm going to have to come at it and rotate it and zoom out and find the microwave from a different perspective. And this time I'm not really too picky about how big a microwave is, so I'm going to click the scaling tool. And this time I'm going to use one of the diagonal scaling uh, handles, and that's going to scale it proportionally. Now that it's a more appropriate size, I can use the move tool to position it better on the shelf. As you can see, you can move it around. You can see that the kitchen's starting to take shape. Next step, let's put in the counter where the kitchen sink is and all of that. Use the rectangle tool, click in the corner, move it in the direction you want. Don't click, just type in the dimensions that you want, separated by a comma, so in this case, eight feet, comma, and then 25 inches deep. Then we need to use the push-pull tool, click on the rectangle, pull it up in the direction you want, type in 36 inches, hit enter, then you have the basic form of those cabinets and where the sink sits. Now I'm going to draw some guidelines to construct the sink. Notice in the background you can see a red axis. And when I use my tool to draw the guidelines, I'm also seeing red arrows, meaning it's going in the same direction. These offer really good hints as to are you moving in the correct plane. Once I have enough guidelines, I can use the rectangle tool to draw in the rectangle, the overarching rectangle of the sink, and then also the basins of the sink. Then I'm going to use the push-pull tool to lift the sink edge up a little bit, but then also to drop the basins down. Remember, you can delete all your guidelines by going to the Display Tools and then clicking Delete All Guides. All right, so I also have some upper cabinets above the sink. I'm going to draw these on the back wall, and then I'm going to pull them forward to create the cabinets. Again, I'm just using the rectangle tool. Click in the corner, move it in the direction I want, type in the dimensions that I need. Then use the Push-Pull tool, click on it, pull it forward, type in the dimension of how far you want it to go out, hit Enter, and then it'll move into the correct distance. Now these cabinets above the sink don't stick out this far all the way across. It's only against the wall that they stick out. So I'm going to use some guidelines to help construct a top view. So I'm going to mark off where the walls meet the cabinets. I'm going to draw those lines in. If you ever need the pencil to stop drawing you can always use the escape key or click on another tool. The cabinets that stick out the most are next to the wall are 12 inches wide and then they when they slant back to the rest of the cabinets which are only 12 inches away from the wall. Now I can use my pencil tool and mark that contour shape. Now to this point I've been using the push-pull tool to make things 3D. This time I'm going to use the push-pull tool to remove material. So I clicked on the surface and I pulled it down until it wasn't there any longer. 
Now we're not completely done, but let's give this some color. Go to the materials panel, and then you can see that you can choose from many different kinds of materials. Let's go down and start with wood, because a lot of my cabinetry is wood. And so I'm going to find the wood color that's most like what I've got. And then when you choose a color, it gives you a paint bucket to click and pour onto the surface that you want to change. You may need to rotate around and, and get different perspectives on the drawing so that you can find all the surfaces that you want to paint or change the color for. There are also options for doing your tile. You can just go straight colors to find what matches your paint. And you can see that things are really starting to look like the real life kitchen. All right, I gotta finish this corner of the kitchen and there should be a window here. So I'm gonna mark off where the window should be using the guidelines tool, that measuring tape tool. Notice as I bring this measuring tape tool vertical, the line, the arrow is blue, just like the vertical blue axis. If you want it to go vertical and the arrow's not there, it's not blue, it's a different color, it's probably not going in the direction you want. It's probably hard to see, but I'm trying to pull this one vertically and it's a green arrow. It's not putting it where I want, so I'm gonna control Z, undo it, and try again. See, it's green. I need it to be blue, and if I rotate this, you'll see it's not actually in the plane of that wall. So I'm gonna have to redo that one. Because the rectangle that's being made isn't working. It's not in the plane. You'll see that things are not laying flat. You can see that that one that was a green arrow is not in the plane of the wall. So I need to use my arrow tool, click it, delete it, and try again. See, I need it. See, it's green. There, I shifted a little bit and I was able to get that axis to be blue, that arrow to be blue. It's in the vertical plane of that wall. Now I can use some colors and make the window look transparent and then put in the wood frame. Go to the display panel, delete the guides because you don't need them anymore. Next I need to put a table in this corner. So I'm gonna get a good perspective on it. Then I'm gonna go back to the components and search for a table. Find the one I want and then I'm gonna download it. And I'm not going to put it directly into the kitchen, but I'm going to set it off to the side so that I can scale it to the correct size that I need. I'm going to do this exactly the same way that I did the refrigerator, the microwave, and the stove. I'm going to put some dimensions on there so that I know how big it is. Then use the scale tool to stretch it to the size that I need. In this case, my table's 20 inches deep. 36 inches wide and 30 inches tall. Now that I have the table at the correct size, I want to move my view so that I can see inside the kitchen and the table at the same time. And I want to take that back leg, some point on that back leg of the table, and I want to move that point into the kitchen. By now, hopefully you've got the idea which tools you should be using and how to use them effectively to create the appliances and the cabinetry that's in your kitchen or any other room you're trying to design. Good luck and have fun with it.